the quality of the life you live is influenced by the people you hear from. Who you sometime in after this service, you may as well also social distance <laughs> from some people if they have been giving you wrong advice and feeding you with negativity. They pull you down, isn't it? You can as well keep some safe distance from them so that you begin to hear people who are going to give you hope. Number four, hearing the word of God brings life. The voice of the Lord is mighty upon the waters. The words, the words I speak to you are life and spirit. That's what Jesus says. Hallelujah. Number five, the voice of the Lord is provision. The voice of the Lord provides. The voice of the Lord makes provision. And in the case of Abraham, when he was about to sacrifice, he heard the voice of the Lord and say, Abraham, don't lay your hand on the child of the promise, for I have made provision for you. Number six, the voice of the Lord is safety. My sheep, they know my voice. They hear and they follow. Hallelujah. Number seven, the voice of the Lord is healing. When the Lord speaks to us, his word is healing. And when we are healing, and <laughs> okay, the people here, as we will pray to us, and you have been having anxiety and emotional issues. Hallelujah. The voice of the Lord is peace. And we are going to pray. And that thing that has been giving you emotional volatility and anxiety, shoop, it's gone. It's gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord is peace. The voice of the Lord is peace. And the Bible says, so that you don't challenge my theology, he says, and I will give peace on the land. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 3. And you might wonder why I give so many scriptures. It's because we want your faith on the word, isn't it? We want your faith to be built on the word. Hallelujah. And when you have that word, uh, you become unshakable. Hallelujah. Because you are stable. You are established in the word of God. So I just want you to know, and I will give peace in the land. And you will sleep without no one terrifying you. And I will get rid of the evil beast from the land. Hallelujah. And that is someone's rhema word today here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the voice of the Lord leads us to safety. And so if you are the one, when we get to pray, just come in front. We want to trust God together with you so that that anxiety should go. The promise of the word of God is that we should, he gives sleep to his people. They sleep like babies, isn't it? You should not have nightmares. And so we are asking and trusting God that you will sleep peacefully so that you wake up rejuvenated, renewed in your mind, renewed in your body with strength so that you can face the day with energy, isn't it? There is, there is a reason why God ministered to us regeneration when we sleep as well. He ministers to us when we sleep as well. Praise God. Yes. And he gives us rest. The voice of the Lord is revelation of our destiny. In the voice of the Lord is revelation to our destiny. Um, when you read the book of Job, I think chapter 33, verse 14 and 15, the Bible says, and man speaks not once, not twice. God will speak not once, not twice, but man would not understand it. I am just paraphrasing that in the depth of the sleep, he opens their heart. He lays in their instructions in the way they should go to deliver them from impending destruction. 
Okay? Yeah, you can check that out in the in Job chapter 33 verse um verse uh, 14 and 15. Hallelujah. And so the voice of the Lord is the revelation also of our destiny. Allow me also just to read um Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read it and meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will be successful. So I just realized that when we indwell in the word of God, that is where our prosperity, that's where our progress, that's where our fruitfulness, uh, the grace of fruitfulness starts to uh, be expressed in our hearts when we indwell in the knowledge of the word of God. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah 33 verse 1 to 5, while Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the card, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Hallelujah. We, got, we get to know which markets to go for when we hear the voice of the Lord, even in terms of where to invest, where to, to even put your business, let it be led of the Lord. It's not everywhere that you have to put your business. We get to understand the timing uh, because when we hear the voice of the Lord, the sons of Isaac understood the times and they knew what Isaac should do. We get to know when to attack uh, and when to go out. And just like David would say, he would inquire of the Lord, do I go to attack now? Do I go to attack or do I hold back? Because the Lord, when the Lord guide, guides and leads us in every way, then we are able to, yeah, we are able to prevail and we are able to sustainably arise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I just wanted to, uh, it's uh, a few minutes, in about 10 minutes I'll be stopping or less so that we can uh, pray uh, and we can get into the prayer dimension. Yeah, just because I am not shouting and saying hallelujah, don't think that his grace is not here. He is here. That I know. I, I also know he is already doing his work. Amen. You know, sometimes we are so used to some things, okay? And we want to feel. <laughs> we want to feel, okay? Even in this cool of the evening, he is visiting us. He is ministering to you. And we know that already, just because you are here, his grace is at work in your life. Hallelujah. And there is a lifting. Hallelujah. There is a lifting. Yes, there is a healing in the emotions. Yes, there are people here who have not known for joy for a long while. We know that the Holy Spirit of God is ministering the grace of joy and peace in your heart. And you are living here. Le Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Revelation 23. And there is a, a Revelation 22. And there is a river. And wherever that river flows, there is a healing. There is a healing. There, and the same river, the, the same river, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 30, Ezekiel uh, 46, 46, and wherever that river flows, there is a healing. There is a healing and there is productivity. There is catchment. There is catchment of fish. Hallelujah. And so today, as we talk, the river of life is flowing. That river of life is flowing. 
and whichever spiritual, wherever that the Philistines had blocked, there is going to flow the river of life. Rama senderebo koyanda in out of our belly there is going to be a flow and that and why I am speaking about that river someone need to get this revelation there is a, Psalms 46 there is hallelujah there is a river that makes glad the city of the Lord hallelujah there is a river that makes glad the city of the Lord. You are a city of the Lord. And when that river flows your way, hallelujah, when that river flows your way, there is gladness, there is rejoicing. You know, there is, there is this lie. There is this lie in the corporate world when people are say, sending if, even India greet, greetings or New Year uh, greetings. They are saying, I wish you happiness. You know, it is a lie from the devil. You know, as a child of God, they jo you are not dependent on happenings. And happen happiness is dependent on happenings. But as for us, our heritage is a joy of the Lord, is our strength. And the fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. We have been given the spirit of sound mind and power. Hallelujah. And within that spirit of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God is joy. So whether you have money in your pocket or not money in your pocket, you are still flowing in the joy of the Lord because you are above and not below. That's what the word of God speaks to us. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. And so we have to manage our attitude. A bad attitude is like a flat tire. You can't get very far until you change it. Unfortunately, there are no garages physical for attitudes where we can take you for physical garage repair to so that we can fix <laughs> your attitude. It can only be fixed by a heart surgery. And the Bible says, and I will give them, I will remove the heart of stone, and I will give them a heart of flesh, and they will worship him. Hallelujah. And they will worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so as I get to pray, it's just a scripture that has disappeared on my screen. I'm just trying to get it. And then I'll end. I don't know. It's getting out. Wow. Yeah. We are rising. We are rising. And for, for those of you who I keep sensing this, this dimension of the grace of peace. Yeah, I keep sensing it. Mark chapter 4 verse 39. Then he rose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace and be still. And those turbulent things that have been waging war against you and the wind ceased and there was great calm. And the wind ceased, even in marriage, even in family. And there was great calm. And the wind ceased. Hallelujah. You know, every time you are trying to make progress, there is this thing called the contrary wind that opposes your progress. They were on sale to another city, to another place. And there arose a contrary wind. And he rebuked it, the prince of peace. And he told the wind, peace. And there was great calm. And there was great calm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 32 verse 17. The work of righteousness will be peace. The work of righteousness will be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Quietness and assurance forever. 
So you who is afraid, I have good news as I end so that we get to pray. Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 to 6. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. And the good news is that he is no longer in the grave. He has risen. He is alive. Just as he said, come see the place where he lay. Because he is alive. With your own eyes, you will see his help. With your own eyes, hallelujah, you will see his redemption. With your own eyes, hallelujah, you will see his favor just like he promised because he is a God who does not fail. He is a God who never fails. He is a God who never fails. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'd like just to pause there before I get to pray. Um, three questions. You have three questions you can ask. I will answer them and then we can have another mic that moves in there. And uh, if I can also have some water. Three questions and then we are going to pray. Anyone with a question, you can raise your hand. We'll be able to see your hand. And we can just, if you can notice anyone with a question, so we can answer them. Anyone? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Anyone? Okay, good. So we don't have any question. Anyone who wants to ask a question on behalf of another person, because you are a good person. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, they have just a bit. There are a number of questions I got, but I didn't get to go through them. And so that's why I'm asking, maybe you have here, you want to ask your question. Yes, please do. I think there is. Praise God. Um, I'm Bilha Cloudy, Mrs. Wapoha. I have this question. I'm a businesswoman. I have a bridal shop. It's called Anointed Brides. Um, on What's the, the issue, name? Anointed Brides. Hey, let's appreciate that is a powerful <laughs> name. Anointed Brides, isn't it? Just post that before you even ask your question. Did you know that the name you give to your business is also the prophetic destiny of your business? Isn't it? Yeah. So some names also, if you call them some, which are the funny names? No. Not to enjoy it, surely you can't call it. Okay, hustlers. You, you, yeah, like hustlers. It's <laughs> pastor who has said that. Okay, what is like hustlers financial services? <laughs> you will you will actually hustle. <laughs> Do you know why God changes the name from Sarah to Sarai? As the husband kept on calling Sarah, 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 the womb was even in age, the womb was taking formation. Strength was being restored, isn't it? And she finally conceived, isn't it? Do you know why God changes Abraham, uh, Abraham to Abraham? So what is the naming on your business? As the customers call that name of the business, they are also speaking life. And they are, because the power of life and death is in the tongue. Hallelujah. In the book of James, the Bible says that the tongue is a small eh, um, organ. I'm paraphrasing, but it has power to do what? To set even fire, to set a, a city, eh? a forest on fire. 
So what is the name of your business? One of the action plans that you may take out of this revival session of business is we look at the name of the business, isn't it? That's why when you are born again, you are called by the name of the Lord. You are no longer called. Yes, I know you are called Wafula, you are called Kipchoge, you are called. Yes, that is in the physical, but you are given another name. You are identified in the realm of the spirit by a different name. So names are important. Don't ignore it. Okay? Names are important. So I like it. Let's appreciate her again for that powerful. Do you want to whisper to your neighbor the name of your business? Just in case. Anyway, some of them are, we, we know we are afraid even to mention, isn't it? Yeah. Just ask your name. Ask, ask your question now. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, indeed that name came through a vision. I and my husband. Um, on the issue of purpose of our business, yes. I wanted to ask you this question on behalf of uh, many of us here. Yes. I know it is very deep. Mm. Uh, like for my business, I had a purpose. That's why I was able to do it without even having any capital. Mm. Um, some business, from my own experience, some clients may come to my shop. They, have, they don't have enough money mm. and they're there. I'm speaking this from what I have experienced. Um, so you, when you remember what is the purpose and God spoke to me that um, you'll be doing counseling here at your shop of which I do marriage counseling, Wow! which I started the training hey, from here. Hey, let's just, so, that's awesome. I like that kind of stuff. Do you know how many women gossip at the, at the salons? <laughs> and we have an, a solution here where you, you go there to receive hope, isn't it? Hey, that is awesome. That business must go far. <laughs> yes, hallelujah. Mm, carry on. I like that. Yes, so mm. the purpose was to serve the, on the counseling ministry mm. and also to help those um, who, who go through some of the financial crisis yes. when planning their weddings. Mm. So some came, you can offer the gowns for free, you yeah. negotiate. <laughs> and uh, that are some of the purposes. Why are you there? Yes. Meet every kind of people there. Why mm. are you doing it there? Mm. So when it comes to the issue of money, you know, yes, we open our businesses because we want to earn income. We want money. We want to pay our rents. But let us not start a business because of just money. Mm. So the question is, some may be asking, how will I sustain myself if I'm offering my services at a very affordable, cheap prices sometimes? How should we handle it? That's a powerful question, and thank you for asking. Praise God. Yes, that's a powerful question. So what happens is that when you set up a business and you are in partnership with uh, God, like in your business, he invests his grace, his grace becomes his equity in the business. Then he becomes a shareholder. He, you are in partnership with him. And the return on investment is glory to his name and also fulfilling the purpose that he has assigned for the business. Are we together? So let me give you a practical example. My purpose is to value add to humanity through compassion. That's my purpose, okay? If I went to Enwealth where I work, and every single money that we receive, we give out and say, everyone that is crying, we give, we give. Trust me, we will close shop the following day. Because the Lord still expects a profit. Do you remember the five talents? Eh, what was the issue with the one who buried the talent? There was no profit. And profit is in two dimensions. Profit is in the dimension of impact and fulfillment of the purpose that you are assigned for. And you have provoked me on many dimensions, which I had not talked about anyway. And I think it's good that it's now streaming. So it is in your purpose that there is the flow of the grace and the anointing. Okay, let me give you an example. So the prophet goes to anoint a king in Israel, 
Do you realize that the oil doesn't flow on the head of other people, but when the oil, the prophet gets the king, David, and the oil begins to flow. When, when the papa's carrier gets to the space of awareness of the papas, the oil begins to flow. And when they are operating in the space, oil in this case is just the grace, the definability that helps you to implement that which God called you to be easily. That is what I describe as oil, is God's grace. Now, for ourselves, what we did is we said a percentage of our revenue as an institution will therefore go towards this purpose. So one of the things you may consider, if you make, for example, um, say you make a revenue of a million or 20 million or 100 million per month or per year, whichever, so you can say 10 or 15% of this money, this money I will advance as discounts, I will set it aside for the needy, those who don't uh, seem to afford my services, but they will be able to e experience um, the, the, the quality of the services that I'm giving you. And it tallies with the word of God in the Old Testament, when they were doing a harvest, they had to set aside a part of the portion for the, for who? For the, for the needy, for the needy, isn't it? And I think it's also in, um, in, uh, in uh, Ezekiel 45, and you will set apart a portion of the land for myself, a holy, a holy part of it. And so that out of that revenue, you set a portion of it, and that you can actually call it your corporate social responsibility because you still need to have sustainability in the business. Do you know that you can be very zealous, still serving God to self-destruction, <laughs> to closure of the business, which was still prophesied of, you clearly heard of God. Can I give us a scripture? It is not a good thing to have a zeal without knowledge. Now you get it? Yeah. Thank you. Any other question? Maybe the last two questions. Have I answered, by the way? Partly. Thank you. And you can incorporate in praying for them as well, even in the business. You are doing amazing ministry. And when they come, some of them are so needy, you can lead them to Christ. I, in our, where I work, people have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Not in church, at work, in the office. <laughs> the office. This is a revival we are talking about in the marketplace. In the marketplace. Yes, our sister. My question is on business, and as it grows, probably it becomes a family business. Regardless of who became vision bearer, I mean, the footprint towards establishing it and with an agenda to have what you spoke about yesterday, not only the children inheriting the business, mm. but everything about the business being in them. And you know, you started from another place, you know? So your career may be the business or not the business, but eventually the agenda is to have the two people, the husband and the wife, carry the vision and eventually to the children. Okay, so you want, um, well, uh, just specific your question then. It's a path yeah. that probably one person may have birthed. Okay. Like in your case, you may have been the originator. Yes. But I'm not so sure at this point if you have your wife in the business and eventually maybe your children will be. And yeah, you don't want your business to die with you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The input of the family is important, but I don't know how to to bring it in. Okay. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate. And uh, I, I mentioned yesterday 
that is not so much what we leave for our children, is what we leave in our children. The problem is we have kept investing <laughs> for them out, but not in them. But you see, what is the value system in them is what holds the outer. Praise God. So what I would suggest is I like what the Asians do. As you go to your workplace or your shop, how about you go with your child? Let them also at that early stage get to see where does money come from, isn't it? And let them also experience at that early stage, how does business work? You can allow them to have some, at an appropriate age, some experiences of workplace. And you can allow them some, some even they can do some tasks in the place that you are working. Um, and I would also encourage then, the place, faith, the question you have asked, it begins with what is a family vision? Most families don't have vision. So you can have a family vision, but then you be intentional as husband and wife within what value system do you want to get wealth, isn't it? And then you can now, after that, go into now the legal framework of how do you structure the ownership into the future of that business from a sustainability perspective. The legal structure is just one dimension. Governance is just another dimension, but the value system in them is also another dimension. So that is a continuous learning process. It entails every now and then you have a family meeting and share. And it also entails sharing the challenges in the office and sharing also the, 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 the good times, the things that the Lord would be allowing you to experience his grace also in the, in the office as well. Of course, you share appropriately because uh, you share in wisdom, isn't it? Um, for example, if you share certain information where there is no capacity to receive that information, it might, with a good intention, it might also cause concern, isn't it? Unfortunately, it might also lead to <laughs> a destruction of the same business you are seeking to build, isn't it? There are some things um, you realize that uh, I may not really uh, share to Kibali because the moment I share with Kibali, I'm not so sure where Kibali might share because of where the age Kibali would be, he may not have the capacity to keep uh, information, which he may share that information that can be sensitive, isn't it? So that is just to uh, share. The last question, I think now questions have come up, they are like 10 now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hello? Yes. Um, thank you for the opportunity to listen to words of wisdom. My question is uh, a bit uh, simple and direct. Uh, we find um, the debt system, the system of uh, debt is uh, so much uh, running businesses, mostly everywhere, the whole country. The whole country is in debt, uh, companies are in debt, and you find even some churches are in debt. And I uh, wanted to just get a position on uh, what is the best way to handle debts, especially in these uh, economic times. And also, what is the wisdom of debt in business? You know, uh, where does it fall? Yeah. That okay. would be great. Thank, Thank you so you. much. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is James. James. Yes. Let's appreciate James. He, she, he has asked uh, a powerful question. And also, let's appreciate Faith, our sister Faith Kome, for that as well. James, you have asked a very pertinent question that I know that. Uh, Many of us, I think you've asked for many on behalf of many, actually. And uh, it's true that uh, many businesses, the, the, the very reason why banks exist is to give <laughs> loans, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> to give <laughs> loans uh, so that people can borrow. Um, and at some point, I was actually also wondering whether it is in the place of the, of the believer to borrow. Okay, but then, um, and this was for me, so I share my personal testimony. 
And I was, uh, you know, sometimes you can easily get confused and even uh, chase away bangers when they come here. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I shall be, I shall be a lender and not a borrower. Okay. <laughs> so one day I was in that mix, eh? and then there's this scripture that came in my spirit. It was a, a context. When the widow, it was a widow of Seraphath, and the, um, uh, the, she was in need, and the prophet told her, Go and borrow. In that season, that was the word that came in my heart. Okay? That's why you need to have the word of God to reach literally in you, because in the season of need, the Holy Spirit can prompt the specific word in that situation that responds to that season. Go to borrow, isn't it? So when you borrow, um, and she went and borrowed, created capacity. So in there, she she actually created capacity for more resources to fill, and she used it, more resources, which was much more, that was the principle. She got more resources beyond the cost of borrowing to repay what was the loan. Have you gotten the, have you gotten the wisdom? So the general principle, if you must borrow, the cost of borrowing must be less than the cost Eh? The return. Eh? The return must be higher than the cost of a debt. That is a general principle. But there are some places I want to recommend you should not go. Shylocks. Be behind the spirit of Shylocks is the spirit of slavery and robbery. In fact, if you... <laughs> Yeah, have you ever noticed that people who open the door of Shylocks, they keep on going through that cycle of Shylocking and it keeps on robbing from them. I encourage, and if you are in here, we would want just to trust God with that, to shut that door of Shylocks. There are, of course, neater ways you can borrow from a bank, you can borrow from different uh, sources that are neat. And that's why also, just in case someone is a, who is not very convinced, who is not very convinced in this story of borrowing, do you remember that there was a season called Jubilee? And in the season of Jubilee was to, the season also to forgive what? Debts. And it was a season of cancellation of debts, which means the moment you talk about cancellation of debts, it means there was what? Borrowing. Okay, the issue is to balance that wherever you borrow, kindly ensure that the cost of borrowing is less than the return expected. That's a general principle. In fact, I can also add there, where pain exists, gain, let go. Let me repeat it. Where pain exists, gain, don't take. Watch an erudite, ndio is 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 ame, is part of Zuri. Where gain, where pain is more than gain, don't, don't take that, isn't it? Because what will happen? You will be a slavery of repaying. You finish this, you borrow this to repay this debt, and then you continue in that rat race of just Madeni. You dig another hole which is deeper to, re, to, fill, <laughs> to fill another another hole. And you know that also Madeni, too much Madeni, so you also borrow guided by capacity to actually make utilization of those states. Don't borrow beyond your ability. So you borrow guided by your capacity to do what? To repay, okay? Don't borrow beyond your capacity. And uh, um, Jesus, Peter has toiled the whole night. And Jesus comes and he says, get some nets. Although they were forming also strategic alliances and partnerships with other multinational fishing companies in that ministry, I think they also went and borrowed capacity so that they anticipated 
a huge catchment. So whenever there is an opportunity and you don't have enough capital to translate the opportunity, you can also do what? Borrow a few nets, that is capacity, so that you make optimization of value in the, in the season and then you return the nets at a small cost, isn't it? That is okay. Have I answered your question? Thank you. But there are some things you should not borrow for. And that includes to borrow to, for consumption. Okay? Don't borrow to, 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 to buy meat, to fry meat in the... <laughs> that can be deferred, isn't it? Uh, don't borrow for once. Don't borrow. Once you can do what? Defer. Yeah, but also I forgot to mention, as you also make money in this journey, you are not rehearsing to live. Take 10% ya pesa yako kula. Kama bado unaishi. Ambia jirani yako kula pesa yako. Usiogope. The Bible says, and you shall eat. Did you remember the scripture I read in, um, in uh, Isaiah 62? And the sons of the foreigner shall not eat your bread which you have, and you shall eat you yourself. You shall do what? Shall, the word shall in legal language is a must. So if you are not eating, you are, disobe you are disobeying. I know sometimes the angels of God, when they minister grace, the Bible says the angels, God uses his angels to minister grace on us. Wanatushanga, uyu mempariki, na anajifinyiria ako tu, yani, he is saving. And why? If you have a bit of it, it takes pleasure for you to look good. Are we together? So if you have... You, if you are earning 100,000, take 10% cooler, 10%. As you bring 10% here, as it ingine pigia mwiliyako pole. Are we together? Now, Pastor, you are not saying amen before. <laughs> Enjoy. Isn't it? Enjoy with the family. Enjoy with the family. And don't wait until you have plenty of it. Isn't it? So at that stage you are, do what? Enjoy. If you are earning 50,000, according to your ability. According to your ability. So if you are earning 50,000, 10%. 5,000. Here, every end of the month, Nunua nyama kidogo, weka hapo, prepare some breakfast, a six-course dinner. Isn't it? Some chapati, some different, different things. You can cut some salad, prepare it. Isn't it? Yeah. If you buy some oranges, put it there, enjoy. Enjoy, isn't it? Yeah, because when that resources came, it came for you to pay a partaker of that blessing. That's why he promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. Though it had different spiritual dimension, but it was also part of then fulfillment of the promise of God. He is a loving father. Are we together? You disappoint the angels. Sasa who you? We are wasting resources, not you, pastor. Okay? Well, tunampeleka ako to hakuli. Let's take them where they will be utilized properly. Isn't it? Yeah, so enjoy. Don't just, uh, according to Daniel Coleman, uh, in his book, Emotional Intelligence, he says that people who have inner resilience to sustainably create value and achieve higher goals have a discipline of enjoying a bit of their and celebrating lifelong journey, um, you know, um, achievements. If you have some achievement, then celebrate. What happens is that the mind restores, uh, restores that memory. That kumbe, kumbe, when you achieve greater goals, this is how nice things can be, isn't it? So next time you set greater goals, the inner you, the endorphins, they are generated so that to give you inner resilience within the physical body to go for those greater goals. But now, kitifinyiria, they mwili itachifinyiria. The same at the last time we achieved this critical milestone, there was nothing. 
It's nothing. Isn't it? Yeah. So I, I want to encourage and challenge us. There is a spiritual dimension and also a physical dimension. Why you need to be a partaker? It is grace. You are, you are consuming grace. God rejoices when he sees you. Um, how do I put it? When he sees you enjoying and having a bit of it. So if you have ability to upgrade from Pro Box to another car, it's okay. Upgrade. Nisawa too. We know the pro, pro box will take you. Uh, I know you are saying it's not how you arrive. I, you will still arrive. <laughs> but I'm not so sure. Anyway. The last three questions. What? Many questions now. Yeah. Yeah. We can, yeah, quickly. Okay. Thank you. I'm called Jack. I'm just asking on behalf of students. Yes, thank you, Jack. You are a good as student. A, as a student, that yes. comparatively, when we look at Southeast Asia and predominantly Africa, where we have many Christians, eh. could it be that we are too spiritual to implement the physical values that you are explaining? That's why our wealth creation is a bit low. Or what is it that they are doing? And yet they are not Christian. But if you look at per capita income, it is quite high among the Southeast Asian countries. The wealth transfer equation is not only in the, in the believing equation, the spiritual dimension, but it's in the doing. It's in the doing. But my brother, oh, remind me your name again? Jack. We are rising. That script is changing. And what, uh, <laughs> when God called me into this thing, I have seen change. I have, we have, I remember there was this widow we were supporting her to pay school fees. The, wife, the husband had an accident, and um, it was just suddenly he had gone to be with the Lord. And we used to fundraise in the church where I was attending and support. And we decided to teach her how to fish. Do you know revenue? The prayer equation generates grace. But this grace needs now infrastructure to translate grace into reality. So someone has to register business. You're not going, and someone has to, and that is you. You have to open a bank account. How will money flow? You need to know how to sign a checkbook, isn't it? Yes. So it's the baby steps. This lady, monthly revenue moved from about 50,000 sales to 800,000 in less than three months. She, she reached form two. She went to Utali, learned how to do pastry. She got a machine. She went to driving school. The problem, my brother Jack, is we have so many unbelieving believers. Pastor, I believe you. <laughs> they believe the word of God. Faith without actions is dead. As a full labor, as part of the full labor, I know you have been whatever, but just begin. Begin with Sukumawiki. You are not going to be cemented in that kiosk. Know that there is grace to continue pushing you ahead. Isn't it? Yeah, begin with that one day cow. Begin with um, that small shop, shop. But you know that you are not, stay, stay, you are not staying there. But also, I, I also want to mention this with humility. We were not discipled properly around entrepreneurship in the business. And that's why we have CBF. And that's why CETA ministry is taking over the marketplace. We are changing that. God is using CETA to change this, this, this script. Hallelujah. Yeah. Though it happened, it's a new season, my brother Jack. I can tell you. And we are one of it. We are one of it. Our business is holding the client funds is 85 billion Kenya shillings. 85 billion. We now are almost crossing over to billion USD, 850 million USD. 
Those are the clan funds we hold in Mauritius, in Kenya and Uganda. When we, we, were, we were praying and the Lord laid in my heart and laid in our heart and we wrote it down that our business will be in Mauritius. One day I was, I was sleeping. I, in the vision, I had this organization logo by the name being removed and being replaced with the logo and the name of our business. After a week, I got a stray email. I can't call it stray, but it was a stray email. It was the same company I had a vision in my email inbox here in Nairobi. And it had this lady in Mauritius was marketing the, her business to us. And I, you need to, beyond looking, you need to see. Then I began to discern. I said, this can't be a coincidence. So I replied and I said, we will be hosting a global investment conference opportunities in Mauritius in the month of May. That was 2019. And say, can I pass by your office? And then she said, yes. As I went, uh, uh, on the day we were traveling, I was traveling back. We, that same morning, at around 11, I get um, um, an email from our lawyer. Our trademark registration in Mauritius had been approved. We got the certificate that same day. As I go to her office, she is of Asian origin. And she says, this company, that is that I represent is shutting down. The investors from Singapore are pulling out. They are not renewing the license. Hallelujah. And I think you will cut that clip so that it's sensitive info. That market is very sensitive with information. So I just want to let us know about this testimony. And so what happened is her daughter was unwell. I prayed for her and I say, I told her, I pray to Jesus. Would you pray my Jesus? She says, yes, pray in the, in the name of Jesus. And I believe my daughter will be healed. Immediately I prayed her daughter was healed immediately. And then she told me, she told me, if you, if you appoint me, as your representative in Mauritius, I will set up annual Mauritius and I will move the business that they are clients who may not have a home to come. That is how we got to Mauritius. When other companies are doing feasibility studies, for us the Lord does feasibility studies. That's the God we serve. This thing is working and I sense this what? A time has come Men who are full of the Spirit of God, not a quarter full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith, overturning cities upside down. Hallelujah. Men full of the Holy Spirit. They are not a quarter. Hallelujah. <laughs> full <laughs> and full of faith, overturning cities upside down for the Lord Jesus Christ. This is happening. And me and you are going to do that. Any other question? Looks like every question is provoking things that uh, a pastor was like, we have to clean, that you have to live here with uh, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Joe Karoga, and uh, I'm currently employed, but I, I want to start my own business. Um, as I do that transition, uh, what are the do's and don'ts as I make that transition? Thank you. Yeah. How you exit some doors determines how you enter some doors. Don't bang the doors behind you. How you exit some doors determines how you enter the next door. Don't bang the doors behind you. Okay? One of the things I did is I took some time in prayer and fasting. And I remember we fasted, we prayed, and said, God, saturate the spiritual foundation of this institution. So you have to bath it spiritually. Because that which is born of the spirit overcomes. But that which is born of the flesh is corruptible, isn't it? 
Eh, that which is born of the flesh is corruptible. So burn, bath it. <laughs> bath it from a spiritual dimension. And also for why are you having it? Resources flow where there is why. Isn't it? And then also ask in what way may I glorify you in this business and stay faithful. You know, some of the things I'm speaking, they are just, if you ask me to repeat, I may not even speak. Because where they are being drawn is in a different. Okay? Yeah. Um, I was saying that you bath it through prayer, isn't it? Because that which is born of the Spirit overcomes the world. Yes. Hallelujah. That which is born of the Spirit, of which Spirit? The Holy Spirit, not another Spirit. <laughs> because there are many other Spirits, isn't it? Yeah, the Holy Spirit overcomes the world. And that's when we can now say the gates of hell cannot prevail over it. Okay? Yeah. Maybe the last two. Yes, our sister, she was... Sorry. Uh, Faith, you want to stop us? Or... Praise God. Amen. Yes, it's okay. on. Yes. Okay. Actually, I have hearing problem. So okay. That's fine. So I've been and you are hearing. Words. We will actually, you will hear properly today. Yes. Thank you. Yes. You will hear properly. Hallelujah. Just come, Pastor. Just come. Just come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rabo Senderebo. Just uh, someone to hold the mic for me as I pray for her. Hallelujah. Rama ka sende rebo ko yanda rabo. Rebo ko yanda rabo ko yanda re maka yanda rabo ko zonde rebo. We declare in the name of Jesus Christ your ears to be open and to hear, to be healed and to hear properly. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, that spirit, Hallelujah. You spirit. Hallelujah. You spirit of the evil one. Mm -hmm. Lose her ears. Be healed. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be healed clearly. Hear the voice of the Lord. Hear clearly. Mm -hmm. Let your hearing sense be restored completely. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Believe and it's done. Hallelujah. It's done. Hallelujah. It's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my question. I'm Sheila. Yes. So I don't know if somebody else has passed or you have answered in yes. me. So yes. uh, I have a company. And, and Sheila, I sense you have been set free from that hearing. It is manifestation. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. I am not talking about a theoretical. Believe, receive that healing. Let it sink. It's not like any other season. I know maybe people have prayed with you. It is not there for me. It is him. I respond with our word. Hallelujah. And, and the dispensation we are walking in, miracles and signs are being restored in the church. The credibility of the gospel is in, in the signs and wonders. And unto them that believe, these signs shall do what? Follow them. This is being restored in the church. And you will hear clearly. You will hear with clarity. I speak to your hearing senses. With clarity you will. Hallelujah. Just ask your question. Okay, I have a company. Yes. I just started last year, July. Yes. Shishan Investment. And it's called what? Shishan. She for Sheila and Shan for the Okay, girl. Tishan. Okay. Yes. yes. So, uh, and a shop for cosmetics. So, I was thinking maybe of doing another business, of opening another business. Yes. And I was like, is there any business <laughs> as Christians? Are we limited in to some businesses or... Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sheila, for that powerful question. Are there businesses that uh, we as Christians, we are limited? And that's a powerful question. Let's appreciate her. 
Let's appreciate her. Let's appreciate her for that question. Yes, they are. Including beer manufacturing. <laughs> are we together? And I know, um, yeah, don't be in there. Don't be one who is... So how do we pray for you, for the drunkards to be saved, and you are the one actually who, who is manufacturing? <laughs> and how will pastor pray for you here on earth, here on the altar and say, when everyone else is saying, God bless my business, and you are bringing your business here to, that is in beer manufacturing and say that. But there are many businesses you can do. Agri-sector is good, isn't it? Yeah, agri-sector is important, and technology space is good. All you need to do is that in whichever space, know that you are a priest unto the Lord. Ensure that that business brings glory and honor to the Lord. I am at that level. I remember one day EABL sent an RFP to our business, and I told my people, we are not, we are not, we are not going for it. We are not going for it. And we didn't tender, and we didn't bother to do that. God has not, has, our God doesn't have a shortage of ways to bless us. Okay? Yeah. Hey, our God doesn't have a shortage of ways to bless us. Okay? Just ensure that whichever, Sheila, whichever business you do, it glorifies the Lord, isn't it? Yeah, and in a way that is not contrary to the promises of the word of God, which means how do we honor God? A business that is ordained in holiness, because without holiness, we cannot see God, isn't it? Yeah, I think we want to take the last question. Any? Yes. My, my name is Alice, and I'm born again. Uh, my question is, you say that your employees, are, most of them are filled with the Holy Spirit. Not I mean, all, and I must give that disclaimer. Maybe just a few. Okay, yeah. a few. And, and we actually don't hire uh, necessarily guided by that. We don't. Sorry for posting you, just post there. I need to clarify. And it's good you have asked that for clarity because someone could have left here with a mindset that he is just filled with the Holy Spirit. Actually, one of the most disappointing people I have had to work with are people who are born again, sadly. And it's not supposed to be like that. You find that other people of faith, they are more competent, isn't it, than so when you hire in the marketplace, you are hiring competency to solve a problem. Be aware you are the one who is a priest. If you may ask, I'm not so sure whether the servants of Abraham were born again. Isn't it? But he was the one who was the covenant carrier. Are we together? He was the one who was carrying the promise. But I also want to know that there are people you need to hire carefully some, actually, some might be having a contrary spirit. You know, there are people who are carrying the other things. So when they are in the business, your business is just suffering losses because they are ca carrying other things. And uh, when they are there, there is no even peace in the, in the, in the, in the organization because, <laughs> yeah, and so follow the place of the Holy Spirit. I remember one day we were making... I had a recruitment uh, recommendation. And uh, I was just about to make a decision. And I, I, I had this scripture coming up three times in my spirit. And, and he say, I am the vine, and, he, and, uh, and you are? And the father is the gardener. And the branch that doesn't bear fruit, I do what? I, but the one that bears fruit, I prune so that it can bear much more fruit. So I was like, how? See, it's a recruitment. So I post and I said, I will answer, I will get back. I'll make that decision later. So I prayed about it and said for clarity. As I had prayer, in the night I had a vision about that situation and it informed my decision. 
ask your question. Okay. My question is, you say that pesa huwa itaki pahali kuna makasiriko. Yeah. And uh, because of the people we work with, most of them, they are not born again. Yeah. And, um, you know, particularly for in the retail sector, you yeah. know, they're the ones who interact with yeah. their customers yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. So how do you ensure that uh, your employees, they remain welcoming yeah. to the... Uh, to, to, to the customers. Yes. 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 Okay, yeah. thank you. So one is training. You need to train them on customer service, isn't it? We talked yesterday, was it yesterday, about competency. Competency. Trust is in. Money need to trust you. Three things. Competency, credibility, and character. Isn't it? But also know that you are... Um, so there, there are different types of trainings. Cut your heart for out of which the issues of life happen, for out of which life happens in the heart. So what we did is we actually put in place for us a chaplaincy program. We realized we are training and training and people's heart remains the same. Because you can't train someone on how to love another. Isn't it? Yeah. So we put in place a discipleship chaplaincy program. And we every Thursday we have a 30, 40 minutes session. Every Thursday, every once per week, we have a session where we go through different uh, sex, uh, sessions of the, the scripture and we have outsourced. Uh, actually, we have a partnership with two pastors from Sita that actually walk us through the scripture and they pray with our staff. Okay? Yeah, so that is what. We realize we are spending money, you are training, and then they still, some of them still come and quarrel. But then when, when the heart issues are sorted, you realize that people get to be, to actually work together as team. And then you are not going to teach people how the joy of the Lord is. That is actually the fruit of the spirit. And that comes by the word of God. Thank you. I think we end. I, I feel like we have done justice on the questions. Have we benefited? A lot or just a, a, a bit, a little? <laughs> a lot, isn't it? Now, oh, 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 our sister behind there, she has a burning one, and we don't want her to burn. <laughs> <laughs> I really thank God for you, man of God, and um, my husband is the one who really insisted that I come. But there's something in my heart concerning finances. Mm. And uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. Part of the reason why I believe the believer does not see increase in their lives is because they don't understand that every giving mm. responds to something. For example, mm. when you pay your tithe, yes. then you can prove God. Correct. There is a seed that will activate something else in the spirit. Correct. One time my sister, my real sister called me and said, uh, Mombi, can I send my tithe to a widow? And I told her, no, you can't. Yes. Because the tithe is for the storehouse. So I'm mm. asking, my question is, can we uh, begin as the body of Christ to make it clear to the children of God what every offering does? Because you will never see an Indian mm. take the money that belongs to their gods to mm. a widow. It's yeah. a separate and different offering. So yes. different givings, different yeah. offerings, mm. different responses. Mm. So I think or I yeah. feel we need to come up with a way of yeah. empowering the believer mm. to understand what every financial thing does. Like the thing that was begun today, yeah. I you. feel it will yeah. cater specifically yeah. for the needs of people yeah. who need the money, mm. but it will also unlock something for Amen. the one who is giving. I in believe, Jesus let's name. appreciate Mumbi for that contribution. <laughs> Mumbi, I believe with you. Uh, you know, in this forum yesterday, today, um, we are limited by time. I have a whole module on giving. Yeah, yeah. And that we can cover a whole day from the marketplace dimension. Just that. Not from, an, from the scripture perspective, from the experience. And what I also want to let you know that what I teach, I do. Okay? It's not theory. Okay? It's not theory. So thank you, Mumbi, for raising that. And by, just to add in, one day we, and, and, um, we, we, we were in 
we didn't have an, enough finances and uh, we needed money, but we had the opportunity to pay rent. That time we were paying rent or pay tithe. I told my wife, let's pay tithe. Let's honor God. Know what happened? What happened? They, we didn't manage to raise rent for three months. The landlord came and shut our, the door for our neighbor's door. Never touched our door for three months. When we got some project, which gave us some good money, we were paying in arrears. And so it was my wife who was paying rent. The landlord was saying, Naninyo watu ni wazuri, munalipa three months in advance. Then my wife was like, no, 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 we have not been paying rent for three months. <laughs> he says, I shall rebuke the devourer on your behalf. There are some things only God rebukes on your behalf. It's not even your pastor. Only him rebukes on your behalf. On your behalf. So if you have been eating tithe, bring all your tithe to the house. Don't eat. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, this is not, um, tithe is a covenant. Honor him in that. Yeah. Hmm. Tithe is in the dimension of the law of honor. And whatever you honor, honors you, isn't it? And Mumbi, you are provoking me in some dimension. I think we just have to keep it now so that we end this meeting. There are people here that need to go and prepare dinner for their parents, for their siblings, and also the, the husbands and the wives as well, isn't it? See, there are some men here who are gentle. They prepare dinner for their, their, their wives as well, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, good. Thank God. Can we give a clap offering to Jesus? <clears throat> Hallelujah.